Day number five of the 12 days of MLB rankings is here, and today I'm going to be ranking the best shortstop from every team in Major League Baseball. The shortstop position is legitimately insane. So this list is loaded, and there are good players in the 20s. So enough of me talking, let's get into these rankings. Getting the shortstop started today at number 31, I've got Nick Allen of the Oakland A's. Let's be honest, Nick Allen would not be starting at shortstop for any other team besides the Oakland A's. He's a utility player, and he just doesn't really swing the bat very well. So while he deserves a spot in a Major League roster, I mean shortstop-wise, Starting, he's probably the lowest ranked one. Next up at number 30, I've got Kevin Newman of the Cincinnati Reds. By no means should Kevin Newman be the opening day starting shortstop. Go with one of your young guys, but right now he is projected there. They did make a trade for him. It seems like that's where he's going to go. He's a weak slap hitting shortstop who has a pretty good glove. That's about it. That's what I got to say about Kevin Newman. Not a whole lot of upside here. For the 29th best shortstop, one of the most disappointing players, Adalberto Mondesi. If Mondesi can stay healthy, it would be really interesting to see what he can do. Between injury concerns and steroid suspensions, Mondesi has not played a full season ever in his career. The most games he's ever played in the season is 102. When he does play, he shows signs of real talent, but going into his 27-year-old season and never really seeing him play more than 100 games in a year, I don't know where to rank him, so I'm putting him low. Coming in at number 28, current shortstop for the Dimebacks, Nick Ahmed. Nick Ahmed might lose his job at some point this year, but right now he probably gets it coming out of spring training. Ahmed always has been known for his good glove, and that still sticks. He is a good defensive shortstop, but at the plate, he's below average. And again, while I think he's not a bad player, he is getting older and is probably going to lose this spot at some point to one of their younger players. So I've got him at at number 28. For the 27th best shortstop in Major League Baseball, new position for the guy, Gio Urshela of the Los Angeles Angels. If Urshela was at third base, he'd be ranked much higher. He's better there. His defense plays better. At shortstop, his defense is not good. It is not going to translate well. He actually swung the bat really well last year in OPS plus at 121 with a 285 average, 338 on base, 429 slugging, and 767 OPS. But putting him at shortstop is a bad decision. It's going to affect his defense and it's it's going to affect his offense, and I just can't really rank him much higher than this. Next up at number 26, I've got New York Yankees shortstop Oswald Peraza. The Yankees shortstop position should be his to lose in 2023. Interested to see what it looks like coming out of spring training. Peraza is extremely talented, solid glove, shown some signs of being a good hitter at the minor league level. Not really quite sure yet what to project him for going into the 23 season, so I'm taking a cautious step here and putting him a little bit lower, but definitely very talented. Getting the top 25 started at number 25, my buddy Miguel Rojas of the Miami Marlins. If you guys don't understand, understand that reference. Miguel Rojas once chirped me on Twitter because of where I ranked him in my video. Let's see what he thinks about being ranked number 25. Miguel Rojas is definitely a good fielder. Great glove at shortstop. No doubt about that. It's just at the plate, there is not a whole lot there. He leaves a lot to be desired. A 600 OPS last year just doesn't cut it. The glove keeps him in a starting lineup, but really at the end of the day, he'd be a great utility player. And until he hits more, he stays down here. Going with a young guy here at number 24, shortstop of the Washington Nationals, CJ Abrams. Abrams is so talented. The talent is through the roof. He just hasn't really shown it yet, although you've seen sparks at times. Incredible athlete, does have a little pop in that bat, and he's an all-around good player. The shortstop position is his in Washington next season, and you expect that maybe to take a little bit of the pressure off him. The one thing that scares me is it's a bad team in a bad lineup, so there's no real reason to actually attack C.J. Abrams, so his discipline will be tested early, but talent-wise, I do think C.J. Abrams can be a top shortstop someday, but for now, I'm keeping him at number 24. For the 23rd best shortstop in Major League Baseball, another really young player, Ezekiel Tovar of the Colorado Rockies. I'm a huge Ezekiel Tovar fan. I saw him play in the Fall League back in 21, and I was like, this kid's good. And he rose through the system last year, and the shortstop position should be his going into 2023. Really good bat to ball skills, decent glove at shortstop, and he's definitely got some pop in that bat. The fact that he's a good hitter, plus playing in cores, and he's going to be getting a lot of playing time, I have high hopes for Ezekiel Tovar in 2023. Maybe a little underappreciated, but coming in at number 22, I've got Jorge Mateo of the Baltimore Orioles. Mateo is actually a good player. It's just one of those things where the traditional fan might not be able to see it because his offensive numbers are just not that great, but he's a really good fielder. Obviously, he's a demon on the base paths. Again, another one of these guys who just overall, his variety of positions that he can play, plus being good defensively and having some speed, that's what makes him really valuable. So yes, while he was one of the better defensive shortstops in the American League last year, I do have to take a step back because the offense just really isn't there. I'm keeping him outside the top 20. Just missing out on the top 20, coming in at number 21 is going to be O'Neill Cruz of the Pittsburgh Pirates. I don't know what to do with this guy. At the plate, he's fascinating. He hits the ball so hard. He hits absolute tanks. He's one of the most fun players in all of baseball to watch just in general, especially at the plate with those crazy exit velos. But in the field, oh my God, O'Neill Cruz is horrendous. He's awful. He does not look like a shortstop. He's just too big. He's too big to play the position. This of course can change and things will get better. But right now, because of how horrible he is defensively at shortstop, with the fact that he's still learning really how to be a major league hitter, I have to keep 
keep him outside the top 20. I really hope O'Neal Cruz makes me look stupid, though, because I love him as a player. It's just not there yet. Getting the top 20 started at the number 20 spot, current Atlanta Braves shortstop, Vaughn Grissom. The reason Grissom's a little bit lower on this list is because he does project more as a second baseman rather than a shortstop. So there is a little skepticism with his defense at that position. But obviously at the plate, Vaughn Grissom looked really good last year in his sample with the Braves. Only 41 games, but he hit 290 with a 353 on base, 440 slugging, 792 OPS. We did see those numbers fall off a little bit towards the end. Again, why I'm bumping him down, but I do think he can definitely be a top 20 shortstop in baseball next season. Next up at number 19, I've got Mariners shortstop, J.P. Crawford. J.P. Crawford is kind of the definition of average for me at the position. Average is maybe slightly above average in the field. At the plate, he is smack on average. He does walk, which is nice. He gets on base, but he doesn't really hit for power. So all these numbers end up just being right in the middle and shortstop is such a loaded position that I have to put him at 19. But J.P. Crawford definitely brings positive value to the Mariners. Welcome back to the shortstop position at number 18, Trevor Story of the Boston Red Sox. Obviously with the departure of Bogarts, Story moves over to the shortstop position and I do think it hurts him in his rankings. One, because shortstop's loaded and two, there are some real concerns with how his arm looks and how he'll be able to play defensively. The glove is always good, but the arm has definitely been a little bit sketchy and let's be honest, the last two years at the plate, Trevor Story's been average. So while I do put him ahead of some of the other guys on this list, that's because of what I think his ceiling is offensively. It's just much higher. It's super intriguing to see what Story will do next year in Boston at the shortstop position. Because the first year, let's be honest, was a little disappointing. 737 OPS and a 238 average. Coming in at number 17 on today's video is going to be Ahmed Rosario of the Cleveland Guardians. Ahmed had another really good season out in Cleveland playing shortstop for them. Defensively, eh, not good. He is definitely below average there defensively. At the plate, he's a complicated player to explain. Because you see he hits 280, that's really good. He does have a little bit of pop in his bat. He does steal some bases, but because of his refusal to walk, it's hard to really put him much higher because offensively, he's just maybe a little bit above average. So you take the plus bat minus defense. It kind of just puts him in the middle of all the shortstops, but Ahmed is really fun to watch at least. And he has been getting better every year. Credit to him. I don't feel good about this ranking. I might be a little bit too nice, but coming in at number 16, Javi Baez of the Detroit Tigers. Absolute nightmare first season in Detroit for Javi and the Tigers. Offensively, he did not look good. You could say it might even be the worst offensive season season of his career. A 238 average with a 278 on base, 393 slug, and gave him an OPS at 671, an OPS plus at 93. Hitting in Detroit's hard, especially for a guy who loves to swing at everything. If Javi Baez works that patient approach he had with the Mets at the end of the 21 season, he can be really good, but until we see that, he's just basically a league average hitter with a great glove at shortstop. Right about the halfway point here, coming in at number 15, I actually have a player who's not going to play shortstop this year, but he is one of the better shortstops in the game, and that's Ha-Sung Kim of the Padres. Yeah, ha Sung Kim is really good. He filled in so nicely for the Padres last year when Tatis wasn't around. Defensively, he's one of the best at the position. And at the plate, he was an above average hitter. 251 average, 325 on base, 383 slugging, 708 OPS for an OPS plus at 107. None of those numbers offensively jump off the page, but his ability to get on base, plus a little bit of pop in his bat for some extra base hits, and the great defense, Ha Sung Kim is a top 15 shortstop, even though he'll probably be playing second base next season. For the 14th best shortstop in Major League Baseball, let's go to the Windy City South Side for Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson loves not playing a full season. He hasn't played more than 123 games since the 2018 season. He's been good in all those years. He's a really good hitter. We're talking a guy who hits well above 300, doesn't strike out, refuses to walk, and has some pop in his bat for sure. Defensively, he has been improving, but I think with the lack of games that Tim Anderson has played, plus the shortstop positions loaded, I do bump him down a little bit, even though I think he is a very good player. Keeping it in the city of Chicago, this time to the north side, Nico Horner of the Cubs is my 13th ranked shortstop. Nico Horner might be good. Good. Nico Horner, good alert. Ring the alarms. Defensively, phenomenal. He was great at shortstop last year defensively. And at the plate, we're seeing big improvements from Nico. A guy who seemingly had zero pop in his bat before, it finally came alive in 2022. 10 homers, 22 doubles, 5 triples, and 55 RBIs while stealing 20 bases. Hitting 281 with a 327 on base, 410 slugging, 736 OPS, OPS plus at 107. Nico Horner's a really good player, and I want to throw some respect on his name. Oh boy, here we go. Coming in at number 12, I've got Jeremy Pena of the Houston Astros. I know he won the the World Series MVP. That doesn't mean he is one of the best shortstops in baseball. He still does have flaws in his game as a young rookie. That being said, whoa, I'm super excited for what the potential could be of Jeremy Pena because he does some things really well. Defensively, one of the best shortstops in baseball. Speed-wise, he's unbelievably fast and he hits the ball hard, but he does have a high K rate. He refuses to walk and the numbers overall in the year put him in this position. I mean, 12, that's still one of the better players at shortstop in baseball. Don't get too mad at me, Astros fans. 22 homers, 20 doubles, 63 RBIs with 11 stolen bases, a 715 OPS with an OPS plus at 101. Great rookie season. I expect him to build on it. And I think he can definitely be a top 10 shortstop by the end of this year. J 
just missing out on the top 10, coming in at number 11, Tommy Edmond of the St. Louis Cardinals. I don't want to say I used to be a Tommy Edmond hater, but I wasn't his biggest fan. After seeing what he did in 22 with the Cardinals, big time improvements. Tommy Edmond actually hit the ball hard last year. While the barrel rates were still relatively low, the max exit velo was the highest it's ever been. He started hitting the ball like a man and his defense is phenomenal. Tommy Edmond's one of those guys that has more value on your roster than he does in one single position because he plays like six of them really well. But even at the shortstop position, he was elite defensively last year. It's just the position is so loaded that I can't put him in the top 10, but I do think at number 11, that's a real good spot for Tommy. Getting the top 10 started at number 10, I've got Willie Adamez of the Milwaukee Brewers. Adamez is so good. Traditional baseball fans are going to hate him because he hits 230. The sabermetric analytical crowd is going to love him because he hits bombs and plays good defense. All you need to know, he's a good shortstop, one of the 10 best. Last year, Adamez hit 31 homers, 31 doubles, 98 RBIs, hitting 238 with a 298 on base, 458 slugging, and an OPS at 756 for an OPS plus at 112. He gets on base, he hits home runs, he plays good defense. There's nothing not to like about Willie Adamez. For the ninth best shortstop in Major League Baseball, Tampa Bay Rays young phenom Wander Franco. I need to see Wander play a full season because if he does, the potential is through the roof. But last year, we only got to see him in 83 games. Still very good. Six homers, 20 doubles, three triples, and 33 RBIs with eight stolen bases. Hitting 277 with a 328 on base, 417 slugging, and a 746 OPS for an OPS plus at 117. Defensively, there might be some question marks there about how good he can be, but at the plate, there's no doubt he is going to mash. He's going into his 22-year-old season. For those of you keeping track at home, he's like three years younger than Jeremy Pena. Franco is going to be elite someday. It's just not there yet until we see him play a full season. Next up at the number eight spot, I've got Bo Bichette of the Toronto Blue Jays. Bo mashed last year. That's what Bo does. Bo hits. He hits the ball hard. He hits home runs. He crushes baseballs. Does he walk? Not really. Does he strike out a lot and chase? Yes. But when you got 24 homers, 43 doubles, 93 RBIs, and 13 stolen bases, hitting 290 with a 333 on base, 469 slugging, 802 OPS, and an OPS plus at 127, you can look past those things. What keeps him out of being in that elite tier, because obviously with the bat, he's got the numbers, is that defensively, he is horrible. No question about it at shortstop, he's not very good. But at the plate, Bo Bichette is one of the more fun players to watch for sure, and he's definitely top 10. Coming in at the number seven spot, newly acquired Chicago Cub, Dansby Swanson. Swanson had a career year in 22. We finally saw him break out and reach that number one overall pick type potential that we thought he had. 25 homers, 32 doubles, 96 RBI, stealing 18 bases quietly, 277 average, 329 on base, 447 slugging, 776 OPS for an OPS plus at 115. Career highs across the board in almost everything. Defensively, he's great at shortstop. He was hitting the ball really hard last year. There's not a whole lot of things that you don't like about Dansby Swanson. He's just overall a really good player. And with another good year, he could definitely finish in the top five of shortstops in my eyes. Just missing on the top five, coming in at number six, I've got Corey Seager of the Texas Rangers. Seager had a really solid first year in Texas, hitting 33 homers, 24 doubles, and 83 RBIs, 245 average, 317 on base, 455 slugging, 772 OPS with an OPS plus at 119. Really good year, all-star caliber player. Defensively, he's a little shaky at the position, and we did see him fall off a little bit in the second half, which is why I kept him outside the top five, but clearly Corey Seager is still one of the best shortstops in the game, and you can expect big things from him in 23. Getting the top five started at the number five spot, I've got Xander Bogarts, now of the San Diego Padres. Crazy move, crazy contract, but Bogarts is worth it. He's really good. Since 2018, Xander Bogarts has an OPS plus of 133. At the plate, he absolutely mashes. Might be one of the more consistent hitters we've seen in baseball. Over that span, 300 average, 373 on base, 508 slugging, 880 OPS. Averages about 20 homers, 35 doubles a season. You know what you're getting with Xander Bogarts. The consistency is always there. Defensively, he went from being horrible to being a little bit better now. So that's something to keep in mind and watch out for in 23 with the Padres at short. Bogarts is just a straight up good player. I cannot believe the Red Sox let him walk. Next up at the number four spot, newly acquired San Francisco giant, Carlos Correa. Correa is so incredibly good. One of the best hitters at the plate at the shortstop position in baseball. Quietly finished last year with an OPS plus at 140, 291 average, 366 on base, 467 slugging, 834 OPS with the Twins, 22 homers, 24 doubles, 64 RBIs, and I fully expect him to get more attention, more press, and more production when he's in San Francisco now with those Giants. Defensively, he's been a little bit all over the place, but I'm someone who's always believed he has great, great defensive tools, and he has a cannon of an arm. Carlos Correa is in that group of elite shortstops, and as we're seeing him get more and more healthy, we're seeing him play better and better. For the third best shortstop in Major League Baseball, I'm going with shortstop of the New York Mets, Francisco Lindor. Ah, hold on a second. Before you start screaming, Mark is biased. Lindor is one of the best shortstops in baseball. He is top five. He is top three. Defensively, he is one of the best shortstops in the game. And after a down COVID season and a weird first 
first year in New York, Lindor returned to his old form, finishing ninth in the MVP voting. 26 homers, 25 doubles, 107 RBIs with 16 stolen bases, hitting 270 with a 339 on base, 449 slugging, 788 OPS. If you look at F4 among shortstops since the 2021 season, which includes the bad first year in New York, Francisco Lindor is second, behind only Trey Turner at 13.1. So I know I'm going to get the comments regardless, but Francisco Lindor is the third best shortstop in baseball, and the numbers back it up. Let's go Mets, baby. Honestly, talent-wise, this guy is the most talented shortstop in baseball, but because of his suspension and missing time, and we just got to see him prove it again. Coming in at number two, I've got Fernando Tatis Jr. of the San Diego Padres. Tatis's numbers are just so crazy. Let's just refresh your memory in case you forgot because he hasn't played in a year. In three seasons, 273 games, Tatis has 81 homers, 292 average, 369 on base, 596 slugging, 965 OPS with an OPS plus at 160. In 21, he hit 42 homers, which was the most in the National League, 31 doubles, 975 OPS. I mean, this guy's an absolute stud. The big issue for Tatis has just been games played. He's never played more than 130 games in a season and over the three, including COVID, of course, which is going to hurt him a little bit. He's averaging about 91 games a year. So take on the suspension, take on the fact that he's been out of baseball for a full year. I think it's going to be a little bit of a slower year for Tatis than we normally see, which is why I have him at two. But talent wise, he is the most talented shortstop in all of baseball. Finally, for the best shortstop in Major League Baseball going into the 2023 season, I have Trey Turner now of the Philadelphia Phillies. God, I hate that. How did the Phillies get him? He's so good. Trey Turner is an absolute beast. While last year was quote, a down year for Trey Turner, he was still one of the most productive players in baseball. As I mentioned earlier, he has the highest F4 among shortstops since 2021, but actually it dates back even further to 2019. Over that stretch, he's been one of the best players in baseball. The last two seasons, we're seeing Trey Turner average 24 homers, 36 doubles, four triples, and 88 RBIs while stealing 30 bases in 154 games, hitting 312 with a 358 on base, 500 slugging, 858 OPS with an OPS plus at 132. If there's anything you want to kind of go at him for, defensively, he is probably just average, maybe a little bit above, but he is one of the most exciting, fun players in the game. Trey Turner's just really good. He is the best shortstop in baseball, even if he's on the Phillies. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with my rankings. Remember to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Really helps support the channel as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill from here on out. This is my third base rankings, which went up yesterday, and this is a playlist to the 12 days of MLB rankings in case you have not seen them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the beginning of the outfield left field rankings. Bye!